Are you laughing about nothing? I was serious. Let's start. All right. Roll it. Hit me. Jack, I'm going to try to do an interview a little bit differently today. Um, okay. Do you want surprises or do you want to have a little bit of preparation? No prep, man. All right, no prep. So reach into this bag. Oh, now, now I regret saying All right, that. Pick, pick out. Just great. It's, nothing's going to bite you. Pick out something? Pick, yeah, you're, you're just going to pick out a we're random gonna go object. This whole, we're going to go through this whole bag. All right. <laughs> what is this? This is a Christmas present for you from me. This is you when you're working at Third Man Records when you're 60 or 70 years old, depending on how well you, uh, you how healthily you ate. <laughs> But you, the best part is, you got me in the office Secret Santa. That's, that's what... Okay, yes, yeah. to begin <laughs> I got you as a Secret Santa, and then I, I found this and painted it. Uh, the third man uniform colors. I kept the Coca-Cola can in there. That was kind of cool. This sits in a place of prominence in mm -hmm. my office. All right, okay. we got that. All right, now uh, pick in the bag again. Oh, man. It's going to be like a human head. A shrunken skull of an old childhood friend. Oh my God, man. What's that? This is a blast from the past. <laughs> this is a sculpture I made uh, when I had my studio in Detroit where I had my upholstery shop and I was also working on sculpture at the time. And they were doing a tile show uh, in the building. It was a building full of artists. And I did, uh, this is, uh, I don't know what's the name of it, gym floor tile. You know how gyms have springs underneath them. So this is a... Uh, uh, like a gym floor, a piece of gym floor. You can see like there's the uh, volleyball uh, outline. Boundary line. Uh, and then, uh, you know, put together with upholstery tax. What year is this? 96. Wow. That's eBay that. No. No, why would I do that? Because I want to buy it. Oh, I mean. All right, come on. There's more. There's... Oh, my God. I almost caught a glimpse of something, but I didn't. Ha. <laughs> This is a great, uh, this is a nice trip. This is, you should have saved all this for the This Is Your Life, Jack, that uh, three people would tune into. This is a cassette call of a band called The Vegetarian Cannibals with their album, Before the Fact. When I was in high school in Castec, me and Dominic Davis, at that time Dominic Suhita, we were just two Polish kids out to find out about rock and roll. And <laughs> this was a punk band. Well, one of its members was in the school. He, uh, Tim Rios was the drummer in this band, and he handed us this tape by our lockers on the sixth floor. Of what period, Jack? Oh, this is before first hour. Okay. And uh, <laughs> we were like, "Wait, what?" You know, we were 14 years old. We're like, "What? You wait a minute. You made an album? You can do that?" We just did, we just it didn't even occur to us that yeah, and we we're kind of like looking at it like. Yeah, you just get the labels and you just make your own. Oh, yeah, you just type this out and copy it down on a copy machine. That's fucking great. And then what was really great was that they had put their band photos here, which I believe are he's Nikita Khrushchev and uh, uh, David uh, Jennings, uh, Peter Jennings' is pill. And I think that's what's that, Leonard Brezhnev? I think that's Brezhnev, yeah. Okay, anyhow. Some of these songs on here, if you ever get a chance to pick up this record, I'm talking way too much about this, but Waza Beta, I think, is one of my favorites. They did a cover of Helter Skelter. Uh, Preppy Attack, incredible. Can't recommend Preppy Attack enough, <laughs> as I've said my whole life. Uh, definitely check out Preppy Attack. But I also love that they were, um, they went on to form a band called uh, on, uh, Forge, right? Yes. Forge, which was supposed to be like a soundtrack to a comic book, the other members of the band. And uh, this says it was recorded, this LP was recorded with high-tech jam box in Tim's bedroom. So you know it's good. Uh, anyways, that made me and Dominic do our first recordings and want us, we wanted to release our own tape, but we never got around to our band The Fuck Ups releasing our own tape as well as this. That was great. Also, two years ahead of time of the fad of I've fallen but I can't pick, get up, the old lady saying I'm, I've fallen but I can't get up. I've fallen. And I can't get up. People thinking that was funny. The, the, the injury of a senior citizen, how hilarious that was. These guys were two years ahead of that. They put that at the end of this tape. It's true. That was, that was a lot of information. <laughs> that was hiding in the back of my brain, <laughs> waiting to come out again. Oh my God. Yes, what the hell? It wasn't in my basement, but. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is a DOD compressor pedal. This was my first experience with compression. Many of the early recordings, and I think a lot of the stuff on the second White Stripes album, Distill, 
went through this <laughs> very complicated compressor. Uh, the vocals and the guitar tones were all gone through here one at a time. Yeah, this, uh, this Lawrence baby saved my life uh, more than once. <laughs> That was my secret weapon for a while. I didn't realize that there, you know, Jack, there are nicer compressors you can buy. No, there's not. <laughs> I'm almost pulling this out. Oh my God. Dude, what are you doing? Am I going to die? <laughs> no, What's no. What's happening? Why, I'm dying. Why would you die? No. This is one of my favorite. How the hell do you have this? This is one of my favorite objects from my childhood. This is my Dr. Pepper belt, okay? And you know what? Say whatever you want. But magnet belts, they're coming back. They're coming back in a big way. Where did you get that? Oh man, I would I would bet it was Kmart, but did you get to pick it out yourself? Like you picked it out because? Oh, if I saw this, I was getting it. There's no doubt about it. I was obsessed with Dr Pepper. My anytime I had a password for a clubhouse or something like that, the password was Dr Pepper. <laughs> no, no fact. Didn't know that. It was only a. Only a couple more in here. That went away. I lost that. Uh, Coca-Cola and, and Fago Cream Soda uh, took over my love of Dr. Pepper. Okay, fair enough. Goober and the Peas. Oh what's, my God! This what's is the, the what's what's the name on the on the cassette? Goober and the Peas Jet Age Supper Club. That was the original title for the the second Goober and the Peas album. The Jet Age Genius of Goober and the Peas. This was the master tape. I remember uh, Dan Miller got these, and they were. I love these because this is made out of porcelain. I don't know if anyone's ever seen a porcelain cassette, but that's what you would get if you had your album mastered before CDs were really sent out too much. They sent out uh, porcelain copies of your album. And uh, I played drums on like maybe two or three songs on this. This is when I was 19 years old. That was my first time really being in a professional studio. So, so another right. object I've never haven't seen since 1994. Right. There's five, two more things. Jeez, oh my. So all, you're selling all this on Discogs? At the end of this. It's a piece of cane brick. What is, what is the purpose of this cane brick? Do I undo it? Or? No. You just want me to try to no, figure out what no. this is? It doesn't need to be ripped apart. It's a prop. This is a black armband. Yep. For what? I don't know. You wore that. Don't remember. In the Hotel Yorba music video. Did I really? Yeah. In the marriage scene, you're wearing a red, you're wearing a oh, red suit and a black armband. That's right. And at that's the end right. of the, at the end of filming, you said, "Here, take this. Hold on to it." Okay. So what material? That is that's. This is Cambridge. This is what you put on the bottom of furniture in a upholstery shop. It's the cheapest fabric, known to man. <laughs> <laughs> now this one, turn turn to the side. Okay. And then, you pass me that coffee. I won't look over there. Don't I'm not look. looking. Don't look. Don't want any of the hipsters to realize I put Demerol in my coffee. Oh, did I say Demerara? What's this? Oh! That's my original four track, Tiak. This is the baby. This was uh, my first experience in recording uh, more than just one uh, track. You know, a lot, of, a lot of times before that, it was like if I was, be, we would do like comedy sketches and stuff. We just record on a boombox or something like that. When I got into uh, playing music and setting up things in my bedroom and being a drummer and, and getting some other instruments and stuff, I wanted to record. My brothers had had other nicer machines upstairs, probably like an eight track or maybe an, a nicer four track upstairs in the attic, but I didn't have my own thing. And I got this from my brother Joe, this and a mixer for 450 bucks or something like that combined. Top market price, no, no <laughs> discounts. No, brother, discount. <laughs> it's okay though, because he, he gave me my K guitar later on. It's so all, it's all, all evened out. All water under the, you know, all comes out in the wash, as they say. So this, uh, yeah, this has a, the Simulsync feature. This is to align the record and playback heads so that when you play along with track one, when you're recording on track two, that you're playing at the same spot. You could also use this for a cool echo effect. You could turn on the simulsync when you didn't want to play at the same time and you get a cool little delay out of it. Uh, but this is basically, I learned all the ins and outs of engineering. Um, you've got uh, multi-tracks, you've got inputs and outputs for both in rear and front. And you can, for the most part, the overdub, which was a whole new world for me. So I spent a good portion of 14 through 16 learning how to overdub. And talking about going back and working on this machine you made a mention of muscle memory. 
Oh yeah, it was funny uh, when we, I set up to work on the Sporting House Reach record. Uh, I had the, this equipment, this this four track and the mixer in this apartment I had rented. And I was trying to be as quiet as possible so the neighbors didn't hear. So I did it all through headphones. So instead of real drums, I was using a drum machine. Instead of a uh, guitar through an amp, I was doing guitar straight in. So I had to bring a compressor with me and, and use that because I couldn't use any uh, loud amplification, loud noises. And um, But it was bizarre because, you know, after a couple times, I'd do a few takes, you know, I'd press stop and rewind. And then pretty soon I'm like, you know, pressing stop, rewind, pressing record and record pause without even looking at it. I'm like, oh my God, I haven't done that move since I was 15. And it's just that muscle memory just stays in your head without even looking. Uh, And it was very funny because uh, Lily Mae came to overdub a fiddle on this country song and I had to reach across her to press record. And I said, pardon my boarding house reach. she said, what's that? And I said what I thought it means. And she said, well, that's a good name. You should name your album that. So oh, I did. Nice. Well, I think that kind of ties it all together. You know, go out and buy Boarding House Reach right now. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> it's, uh, www.thirdmanrecords.com. Thanks. Um, you sure I'm not going to die? I, I mean, not, not from my do. hand. <laughs> I'm not afraid of death, by the way. Do you think I, do I look like I'm dying? You've looked better, but I mean you have lost some weight. I mean your looks have become an issue. How long can we keep this going? Really? <laughs>